Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about building the Godot game engine from source code. Uh, so we're going to look at all the tools you need to get this process done, and we're going to be looking specifically at the Windows platform instructions. Now, there are different instructions if you're on Linux or Mac, but if you're on one of those platforms, I'm probably assuming that you've already got some familiarity with building code from scratch, whereas this is a much less common thing to do in the world of Windows. So that's what we're going to cover today. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, a lot of times there's new functionality being developed that is not in the primary branch. Branch. So you want to build it from scratch or you're going to change the source code and make edits or changes to the Godot engine itself. Well, obviously to do that, you need to know how to build or rebuild it. So that's exactly what we're going to cover today including, of course, all of the tools we need to get going. Now, this is going to seem a little bit more daunting than it is, so don't worry. It sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's not really that bad. So there are a number of things we do need, though, and they need to be installed somewhat in order. At least these first two things need to be in order. The rest can be in whatever order you want. But first thing you're going to need is a version of Python. Now, I believe either would work, but I highly recommend you go with the 2.x branch. Um, normally, you think newest is best, but in the case of Python, that's not really the case. Um, the language fragmented at some point in time, and a majority of people are using the 2.x, not the 3.x version. And a lot of tools will require you to install the 2.x version, but not the 3.x version. So do be aware of that, but just head on down here, grab the installer. Um, the only thing you want to be making sure of when you do the installation is, and this is true for all of these things, allow it to add to your system's path. That means it can be found when you open up a command prompt later on. And you can check this out after you're done your install. Just fire up a command prompt and run the command Python. If you get a command not found, Python isn't installed correctly. Uh, it's possible if you're on an older version of Windows, such as Windows XP, uh, you'll need to do a reboot before your system path is updated. So after you've done the install, if it's not showing up here, uh, do a quick restart and you should see the version of Python that you have installed if it all worked properly and then control Z to exit out if you wish. Now the next thing you need to grab is SCONS. Now SCONS is a build environment. It's written in Python, so you need to have Python installed to install SCONS. When you're installing SCONS, once again, there is an executable uh, installer available. So there's an installer right here. The key thing is, again, let it install to your system path. And once again, once it's done, you can test it out by typing the word SCONS with an S, scones like that. If you get a command not found, again, there's an issue. Once again, if you're running an older version of Windows, it's possible your path variable hasn't updated yet and do a reset. Uh, otherwise, reinstall it. Make sure that you did set it to install into your system path and you should be good to go. Uh, now, after you've got those two installed, the next one you're gonna need is a Git client. Now, Git may already be installed by something on your computer. Once again, just run the word Git. If it works, then you're good. You don't need to install it. If it doesn't, uh, go ahead and grab it. Um, I've got all of these links will be down below. Um, so, you know, don't pay too much attention, but the Git client I'm using is command line only available here. And once again, be sure to install it so that system path so it can be found. And you can once again test it by running Git and see how it returns. And then the final thing we need to install is some form of Visual Studio. And in this particular case, uh, I already have Visual Studio installed, Visual Studio Community right here. You can download it and tell it to install just the C++ stuff if you wish. Or if you don't want to install Visual Studio at all, uh, make sure that you install, or you can go ahead and install build tools for Visual Studio 2017. Uh, when you do this, also make sure that it installs a version of the Windows SDK, uh, because the Godot build requires a program called RC that's available, not necessarily in the build tools, but is available in the SDK. But if you've already got Visual Studio installed, or you go ahead and install Visual Studio, that's more than enough. But if you don't want the full Visual Studio experience, you just want to be able to build from the command line, this is a, a stripped down version that contains just the C++ tools from the command line. Um, so once you've got all those things, we are good to go. Next thing you need to do is come into GitHub, like so. So this is the GitHub page. Once again, all these links are in the comment box down below, so don't worry about you know paying too much attention to the video if you need them. But come on into the main page, go to clone or download. Now you'll notice that you've got multiple different options for uh, branch right here. So if there's a, if you're trying to build an old version such as 2.1 or 2.0, you can switch to an old branch. But normally what you want is master, which we have selected now. So once you've got the proper branch select, just come over here to clone or download. And you can see there's the, the uh, URL you want. In this case, just click this button right here and it will copy it to your clipboard. And we are half of the way there. We've got all the tools we need. We're ready to go ahead and run it. So next thing, come in and go. Um, so what we want is here 
you want to run a Visual Studio command prompt, one of these guys. Now, I'm not getting the one I want in my search results here, so let's actually just scroll down and find it. So once you've installed Visual Studio, you can scroll down and find Visual Studio. So this is the IDE. This is not what you want to run. We actually want to run the build tool. So go to this guy right here, that folder, open it up, and locate either the um, x64, if you're doing a 64-bit build. I'm going to do a 32-bit build in this case. And you want to run the x86 native tools command prompt for Visual Studio 2017 or the x64 native tools command prompt for Visual Studio. Uh, so again, I'm going to do a 32-bit build here. And so that is that. And now, next up, you just basically need to tell it where to install. So I'm going to go into the temp directory in my particular case, like this. Uh, let's see if I can... One sec, I'll get the font a little bigger for you. All right, so that should be slightly more readable. Okay, so you've got your command line, you're in the directory you need, so we're in CD temp. Now this is actually gonna go ahead and create a folder for us. So what we do is git and then clone, like so, and then paste. So we're just pasting in that uh, link we downloaded or we copied earlier from the GitHub website, and then press enter. And now what this is basically doing is using the git command to um, get all of the files from the GitHub web server. And this is going to take a little bit of time, depends on your computer. So you, um, I think it's a couple hundred megabytes. It really comes down to your connection speed. I'm one gigabyte download speed, so I'm not going to you know, pause this. It'll be done before we know it. But depending on your connection speed, this could take a couple of minutes. And there you go. So now that that's done, if you do a dir command, you will see... Uh, you created a folder, in this case, Godot. And we'll switch into that folder, like so. And now we are ready to run. So this is where that scones that we installed earlier comes in. Now, excuse me, at the simplest level, all you need to do is run scones platform equals Windows. Go ahead, press enter, and that's ready and done, and it'll do everything you need to do. Now, on top of that, there are a couple of options we can do. One is dsproj equals yes. What this will do is go ahead and create Visual Studio projects for you. So if you install the full-blown version of Visual Studio and you want to use it instead of the command line in the future, this will create a bunch of Visual Studio projects files for you. You can just double-click those, open them up in Visual Studio, and it takes care of everything for you. So no more needing to use scones or any of the rest of this stuff. So if you prefer to work in Visual Studio, run this command it will create the files for you um, another option is tools equals yes or no this is basically um, generally you're going to want it to be yes until you understand why you want it to be no um, but this is do I build Godot um, like the Godot editor etc or not uh, by default it will automatically build for you and another one and I'm not going to really touch on it at this point in time because first off because I don't have mono installed but with the newest version of the Godot game engine there is now C sharp support via the mono libraries and if you want to build those they're not built they're not enabled by default yet but we're talking beta stuff here and I think this flag is going to change in time so that this will be um, by default true so this may not be true in the future but if you want to build with mono or c sharp support run that command as well now in my particular case i do not have mono installed and you need to install mono before running this command so i'm not going to include that so um that should basically be it we can go ahead and run that code now and what this will do is kick off all of the tools and if as long as there's no errors going on and this will now compile um Godot. Now, if you get an error basically saying rc.exe not found, that's because you do not have a Windows SDK installed. Uh, very common occurrence there. Uh, otherwise, in theory, this should run and continue and go. Now, one thing to be aware of, you might actually get an error. It might spit out an error at you of some kind. Um, like we're getting numerous different warnings that you're coming through here. Well, if one of them is actually an error, well, that makes sense because you're working from the code version. So if someone, it's called breaking the build. But if someone submitted some code that doesn't compile, they've broke the build and it won't compile and unfortunately uh, unless you know how to fix it dems the breaks and that's the downside of working from the master branch as opposed to from using you know compiled builds is there's no guarantee that the source code is currently compiling and working so it is perfectly possible that there is an error that could occur and that error occurred because um, you know a, a programming mistake in the source code somewhere uh, so do be aware of that now this process actually takes a little bit of time um, actually quite, takes quite a bit of time. So I will go ahead and pause this. So depending on the speed of your computer, um, the amount of, um, let's see, what will actually make a difference on compilation? The CPU speed, uh, the RAM amount, the if you have an SSD drive or not, uh, those things will all kind of combine together to determine how fast this compilation process will be. But this does take some time. So I will pause it and come back in a couple of minutes when it is done. 
hopefully there are no errors. I actually haven't pre-tested this. So let's hope the build currently works. But if it doesn't, I will show you an example of a broken build, I guess. All right, see you soon. All right, so here we are at the end of the process. It's about uh, 15, 20 minutes have elapsed. You can see here, it's just at the very end. It's creating the uh, the pieces we need, the uh, final output, depending on your build, 32 or 64 bit. And when you're done, you also see that it went ahead and created the various different uh, Visual Studio projects for us. Uh, so if we look in the directory that we just worked in, so if I do a DIR here, you'll see uh, now we've got a couple of new folders, including the bin folder. What I'll do here, is open this in Windows Explorer and here you see so we've got now it's created a bin folder for us right here and we've also got uh, where the hell does it create them um, if we head on down here you will see we also have the Godot uh, project files have been created for us so at any particular time now you can grab that guy open it up and it will fire up the full version of Visual Studio proper it's a fairly large file, so this could take a second or two. There you go. So you'll see it has now created a solution for all of the various different source files, um, various different pieces, everything we just used right here. So if you want to build it in the future, you can now build it directly in Visual Studio. Now this is going to take a little bit of while, a little time for it to parse. There's a lot of files for it to go through. Uh, but as you can see, the uh, the project is now available to be built inside of Visual Studio if that's your preference going forward. So that was what that uh, VS project equals yes switch did. Um, so next up, we'll go back over to Explorer here and you'll see the key guys here as you go to the bin folder. And this is now where your new version of Godot will exist. So it's right here, godot.windows.tools.32.exe. If you wish, you can rename that to godot.exe. Uh, but just double click that guy and you have just built Godot from source. Ta-da! So there is Godot 3.0, whatever version it is as of today, uh, running like so. So you see 3.0 alpha dot custom build dot blah, blah, blah. So if you need to build a version before there is a new release for it, that is the process required. Um, hope you found that informative. If you did, please, of course, do click that like button. And this video, um, there's a reason for it. So if you stay tuned, we'll be looking a little bit at that uh, mono stuff. I didn't talk about that detailed here. Uh, when we look at the C-sharp support that is being added to the Godot game engine, expect that video up very soon. But as you can see, you currently have to build it to get through that process so I decided to throw up a video uh, on the process in general so hopefully some of you guys find this useful even if you're not interested in C sharp support but if you are interested in C sharp support you do need to know all of this stuff anyway so that's why I did it so anyways if this video was useful to you please do click that like button if you're into game development stuff we've got all kinds here uh, do hit that subscribe button and uh, I don't mention it very often I don't like harping on about this but I also have a patron uh, fund if you're interested in supporting on that level uh, it's definitely appreciated the link is um, I think it's in my banner up above uh, but any support there is of course appreciated but just watching this video is, is support enough uh, again i uh, appreciate it all i hope you enjoyed that i hope you found that useful not you know the most exciting thing building some source code but um, it is an informative process and it's not as scary as it initially looks with so many steps because you know most of it's automated and as long as the build works fine it's, it's a pretty straightforward process and you only have to go through this once. So the next time you want to build a new version of Godot, you basically just grab it from Git and run that scones command and you're done. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. See you all later. Goodbye.